good Sunday morning, everybody. As you can see, I've already started. Y'all got a sneak peek before I even start talking this morning. Hope you all are having a God-blessed Sunday morning. Hope you got something good in mind for Sunday dinner. I'm going to do an old-fashioned short and sweet dinner here today. Uh, Tony and Tanya are supposed to be coming by to eat, so we'll have a few people getting off the flavor train today. So, what I'm doing here... I've already got myself a head start. This is like the do head stuff that you can do. These are squash. Yellow, just regular, everyday yellow squash. And what I did was wash them really good. Because, you know, sometimes I don't know how and why. But if you don't wash squash really good, sometimes you can bite into them and get a piece of grit. And once you get a piece of grit in your mouth, well, me, it's almost like I can't do it no more. I can't chew no more. So make sure you wash those squash really, really good. Because what I'm going to do with these squash today, I'm going to make some old fry, all time uh, fried squash and onions, y'all. And it's just going to be loaded up with uh, the butter, the squash, and the fried onions. And you just keep frying them and frying them and frying them down. You'll see. We're going to go through this together. So what I've already done, you first of all, like I say, you wash those squash really, really good. Boil them for about 20, 25 minutes. Get them softened up. Now, I cut mine in pieces like this because we're going to you know, mash them anyway. I'm going to drain this water off of them. And then I'm going to come back and put them in my skillet with the onions. And we're going to fry them up. Okay. The other item on the um, menu today is going to be lima beans. And I'm going to do a little twist to them today. Maybe some of you already do this. I don't know. I'm going to do lima beans and I'm going to drop some white potatoes and onions in them and see what that tastes like. I've got a, a piece of a turkey neck in there already cooking to give it a little bit of flavor. But I'm going to put main, the main uh, oil in them uh, is going to be um, butter, a smart start. I'm back on my finally found smart start again. I don't know what happened to the smart start. But anyway, and y'all, I told you yesterday when I was making those... Um, muffins those apple raisin muffins i've been wanting biscuits for the longest and i ended up doing those muffins so today i think i'm going to make some mama's old-fashioned butter biscuits so let's get started with the squash so what i'm going to do is just go on over to the sink and pour this water off and get them ready so when you see them again i'll be ready to put them in the pan with uh, the onions and the uh, butter so Oh, I forgot about, how can I forget the main ingredient? I guess y'all trying to figure out, well, she's going to do squash and lima beans with potatoes. Is that it? No. Glad you asked that question. That's not it. I'm going to fry some old-fashioned pork chops today. So we're going to have pork chops, and then we're going to have some rice and gravy, you know, to go with those biscuits, and the lima beans and the squash. So let's get started, y'all. I only got about another hour and a half before this has to be on the table. Flavor train is going to pull in between 3.30 and 4. So I've got all my prelim stuff, uh, my pre-cooked, uh, my chef, sous chef stuff is all done. So we're getting to the main meal. Sous chef did pretty good today, y'all. So hold on. When I come back, y'all see these squash in the pan. Okay, y'all, just before I get the squash going, what I'm going to go ahead and do is get my lima beans going. I, the water's hot. I just had to put a little extra water. Two cups of water in that pot, and then I'm going to put a tablespoon of my uh, chicken bouillon seasoning in that water to season it up a little bit. And then, of course, I told you I already got that smoked turkey neck in there. And we're going to go with some uh, black pepper in there. And, uh, yep, there it is right there. About a teaspoon of black pepper. There we go. Then we're just going to, oh, fortunately for me, because I only had one uh, bag of lima beans. These are my food line lima beans. This is uh, like a pound and uh, over a pound and a half, about a pound and three fourths of lima beans. I usually cook about two pounds, but guess what I found? About three servings of lima beans out of the freezer. So when these get done, I'm going to add those frozen ones. In there so we're gonna have some fresh and some leftover all you got to do with these my dears put them right in the pot there and just before they get done I'm gonna drop those potatoes and onions in there so we're gonna have us a good old good old pot it's gonna feel like it's gonna wrap a, wrap its arms around you and the reason I'm going ahead and do these lima beans because it takes about an hour for them to cook Okay. 
and I'm gonna drop my couple tablespoons of smart start in there so when they cook that flavor will cook right through them y'all okay so I'm gonna put the lid on them let them start cooking and they're gonna cook for about one hour that's one hour on uh, a, this is like uh, like I said a pound and three-fourths of lima beans cooked in uh, two cups of water a little piece of um, smoked turkey meat the um, oh the main thing though for the seasoning because I'm not cooking them with the meat you know normally you cook your, your greens and your beans and I use uh, cooking meat I'm using um, that chicken bouillon seasoning, okay and then the butter that way I don't have a lot of grease and not a lot of salt in there so we're gonna let those go ahead and start cooking real fast when that heat gets up real high and start cooking real fast then you can go ahead and lower that heat and let them cook for the next hour to form that little thick soup so I'll be back with the squash okay we're back it's time to get these squash in the pan y'all I've got uh, a stick of butter here smart start and uh, a couple of tablespoons of olive oil in there because you know um, smart start it has some water content so that olive oil will take care of that uh, water content for me so what I do is make sure that that uh, and I also keep my butter from browning because you have to have the skillet real good and hot to fry the squash okay so I have to have enough oil in there to fry it so while we're waiting on that to heat up as much as it can without burning we're gonna go ahead and start putting the seasoning I'm gonna put one tablespoon of my chicken bouillon and the one thing about squash they're hard to season in the beginning because you'll keep putting salt putting salt putting salt and seem like they're not salty but they are because later on as they sit or the next day you go back they're really too salty sometimes y'all so be careful when you're salting your uh, squash so I'm gonna say for our practical purposes this tablespoon of uh so this this uh, what i tell you this is six pretty good size squash a little bit over medium six of them and a gigantic i have an onion that big so the biggest onion you can find or two large onions you're going to cook six or you know good size squash because you want lots of onions in there okay because it's called squash and onion or onions and squash but you you not you like light not lots of nice uh onions in those in, in those spots there's i got two of them i got these big chunks in there what's, what, what's up with these chunks let's cut the chunks cut the chunks okay so when i see that these uh that this oil is sort of trying to brown on me a little bit it's hot because it's trying to burn on me you know but i gotta let it do that so i know it's hot enough so i'm gonna go ahead and start putting yeah, you want it to do that because you want it to squash. And just make sure you chop those squash up. Keep that heat all the way, turn all the way up. Keep it all the way up. I guess I should have used a larger skillet. Y'all think? This place. Yeah, I hope I don't have to switch over. I don't know why I thought that skill was so much bigger. But this squash is going to shrink down anyway, y'all. Uh, y'all know that. If you have a quick fried squash. They're going to fry and fry and fry and then. I think I got a leak over here. I got a leak over here on the squash. What the world? I got my cones are sitting there. And I thought all the juices out. And one thing, another thing too about the squash, make sure you get as much of that water squeezed out of those squash. You know, squash is a water vegetable. Okay. So make sure you get as much of that water squeezed out of those squash before you put them in the pan. Otherwise, they're going to like, you know, do like a steam thing. We don't want to, we want fry it, not steam the squash. Okay. Yep, I got a ton of onions in here, so I, you know, I'll, this way mama did it, and this is the way her baby girl is doing it now, because I like lots of onions in that squash. And I'm just going to just dump the rest of that right on in there. But you're going to cook this 
gonna hide the entire time. At least that's the way I do mine. And I may even have to add a little bit more oil in the bottom of that pan. Yeah, that still looks good. That's good. You just have to make sure that the heat stays high and that you have oil in the bottom of that pan to cook the squash around. This is gonna be so good, y'all. If you never had squash and onion, try this recipe. And it is mm -mm good. So it's gonna take a good 30 minutes to get these all fried up because as they go along, they'll start to brown because I'm keeping that heat up high. I'm gonna add me a teaspoon of black pepper to them. It's gotta have the black pepper in there. And this is just a little bit of a seasoning mixture that I made up. Got everything. This is called my everything in the cabinet seasoning. Okay. Now I'm just gonna let those fry, and then let I'll let them fry without stirring for about five or six minutes, and then I'll stir them because I know they get crispy and start browning on the bottom. And we'll do this for the better part of 30 to 45 minutes. So we'll be back at different intervals to show you what they're looking like. I'm gonna go ahead, I got a pot of rice that I need to get on the stove. I gotta start prepping to get my pork chops in because I wanna start frying them at 2.30 and I got seven minutes, y'all. So hang on, I'll be back. Okay, I just wanna let y'all get a look at these squash while I got a minute. See how they start to brown as you leave that heat on high, but now I'm gonna tell you something, you have to keep stirring them because just like they brown, they will blacken. So you have to keep it stirred. See how the, the uh, bottom of that pan? See what it looks like down there? It's still greased. There's no water in there, so they're frying. So that's how you do fried squash. You just keep doing it like that until for about 30, 45 minutes until they're done. And you'll see they'll, you know, of course they'll start to shrink. But that's some good eating in that pan, y'all. So we'll be back. Okay, y'all, those squash are done. These are squash. Now that's real southern fried mama's homemade squash so they're done um took me about 20 minutes to get them to this point so that's all there is to it. it's not real difficult to do that now i've had to switch pots for my lima beans because i i needed more space to put the potatoes and onions in so now that i made that great discovery i just put them in a bigger pot i'm adding my potatoes and onions to my lima beans I'm going to give them a stir here. And plus, y'all know, I told you I found a bag of uh, lima beans that were left over. So, I had to. I don't know what I was thinking. Had to, had to, had to. So, I now added another cup of water so my potatoes will go ahead and cook. Mmm. That's going to be so good, y'all. And only these beans thawed a little bit more. And then I'll just drop them over in there. They already cooked. Okay, so we're just going to put those beans back over there and let them do what they do to get these chops ready to go. So hold on. Okay, y'all, I'm back. I'm getting ready to get these chops going. As y'all can see, I got my flour sitting here just ready. Got my beans. Flour cracker purses, they're ready. The squash is ready. We got the rice sitting back there. I want to hit y'all know I cook the rice according to the box now. And then when I get these chops on, I'm going to get on the other side of the room. And I'm going to have these biscuits. Now, I've been trying to do biscuits for a couple of days. So, I'm getting ready to do me some biscuits here. But I got to get these shops going first. So, the quickest way for me to get them going is we're going to eat dinner no later than 4 o'clock. I want to, this is my flour. This right here is my um, cup of milk. Uh, and whatever seasons you want to put. I always put like some uh, complete season, a little bit of garlic powder in my milk if you got buttermilk then you don't have to do all that just even season if you don't want to so let me get this oil off the burner here because it's going to be too hot by the time i get ready so we just take that oil off for a minute and let it cool down but this is you can either use a cup of buttermilk or you can make your own buttermilk if you don't have buttermilk i've said this many many times it's just regular any kind of milk you got in your refrigerator including skim milk even skim milk or two percent milk will make up into this you see how thick that is it tastes just like buttermilk honey if i had cornbread i could eat that so what i want what i like to do with these is dip my pork chops in and then um put them in put them in the flour and then fry them because i like that extra crunch and that little extra bit of flavor 
But in the interest of time and the mess that I always make doing pork chops and anything, like I told you, anything to do with flour, I always make an extra big mess. So to save a little bit of time, I just uh, came up with the way to do this a little bit different today. So the only thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this mixture. I've got my pork chops. Let me show you. I pre-season these pork chops. This is, uh, let's see, eight, four, it's 12 chops in here. 12 big ones and then 12 sort of small ones. So what I did was pre-season them last night, let them sit and marinate in that uh, mixture of, uh, uh, you know, whatever seasoning you use. Complete seasoning is enough by itself, but I mix all other kinds of stuff. Season all, a little bit of uh, lemon pepper, just whatever you have. Just season your chops real good. Let them sit overnight. And then you can just flour them and cook them. But I like to put that little extra step in there. So what I'm going to do is take my, we're going to call it buttermilk mixture. And I'm going to just pour it right over these chops right inside the bag. That way I don't have to worry with, you know, dipping them in, dipping them out and all that kind of stuff. I don't have that kind of time to save right now. The time, you know how time seems like it, like it seems like the last hour of whatever you're doing, time just seems like it just fast forwards on you for whatever reason. So it's, it's, it's no different than any other day that I'm cooking. Especially when I'm cooking a lot of food. Time just skips up on me and does what it do. It keeps on moving. Get some of this out of the way from over here. Okay. I think I got that oil cooled down enough. So what I am going to do just to make sure that I got it cooled down enough. Just before I put those chops in, I've turned the heat from under it because you don't want that heat super, super hot simply because you've got that batter on there and that batter will brown too quick. So, still going to back it off of here. And got my rice sitting there. It's about ready. Everything's about ready. Okay, you know what? Like I said, when you're in the kitchen cooking, I very rarely leave out of the kitchen. I'm always somewhere in close proximity where I can stir it because I don't like no burn up food. I have burned stuff in t at times. Yes, I have. And I don't, it's not a pretty picture. And, it t and I've, I've learned how to, that if you do burn stuff, I've learned how to retrieve it. But that's that's a long drawn out process that I don't necessarily have to do. And sometimes I can even still taste a little bit of burn. The average person would not, but I don't even like to go through all that. So stay in the kitchen, watch your food, stir it off, and, you know, like they say, a watch pot. Now, you don't have to do the watch pot thing, but you do have to pay attention. You can't be on the phone and on the computer and looking at sitting down, getting engrossed in TV and stuff, unless you are a super master multitasker. But you know, y'all cook, y'all know what I'm talking about. And I like to watch to see what my food is doing. Because as my food is cooking, I'm learning, uh, you know, the things that it does through the cooking process. So, this is what I'm doing here. See that? Got that mixture poured over them. So, all I got to do now is dip them in that flour and then put them in that skillet and start cooking these chops. This is 257 and they need to be done right at 4. So, I think we're going to be on target for time. I don't think I have that to worry about. So just make sure you get them all mixed around in there really, really good. I think I can get maybe, though they're pretty good size, but like I said, I got some small ones as well. Let me go ahead and pour that extra oil. I got olive oil and corn oil mixed in here, so. That feels like it's about right. So I think I'm going to use it to. If you use tongs, make sure you hold them real good now. Because we don't want them to slip. So just, just hold them real good. I'm going to go ahead and just, like this one here, I'm going to go ahead and dip it right into that flour like so. And I'm being so neat and cautious, honey. Seem like every time I do this, I'll find a way to get it everywhere. So 
But we doing so uh, look, I only done one. <laughs> only done one. Hopefully I can get four in that pan. Maybe y'all, maybe. Y'all pray with me and four. I'm just gonna move this out of the way. Should have used that bigger one. But this is working out pretty good taking from the uh bag to the flour. I'm gonna give it till I get at least three before I start dropping them. I still have not turned the heat back on those chops, but like I said, I do not want these chops to cook real fast because they get there. They're not all that thick. They're about a, a half inch thick. But you know, just like I know, it takes time to cook chops. I'm trying to get the biggest. I got what I'm calling kind of small ones, and they're boneless. I got some smaller boneless chops in here. And those are the ones that, that will be good to eat between your biscuit. Yeah. Those are breakfast chops. And I'm praying I have some left over. Well, one at least so I can have for breakfast. I love a pork chop biscuit with a um, cup of coffee. Lord knows that's good. It reminds me of the days when I used to. And I, you know what? It's been, let's see, let's see I was seven. It's been 63 years ago that this happened. I, I've, t I've told this story many times. The lady that taught me to drink coffee, that first got me to really drink coffee. Well, mom would let us sip it a little bit. But this lady taught me, you know, because I always listen when it came to food. She taught me that was just plain. She said, gal, make that coffee good and strong. Don't put no milk in it, just coffee, and it, it make it strong and sweet. And it had just such a different flavor to it. And I can just remember that now. But now, I like cream my coffee. I'm going to turn my burner back on. That grease is cooled down enough, I think. So, let's get y'all over there. And this is going to be the process until I get all these chops done. Okay? That's perfect. Because if I had left it where it was... Those chops would have been brown by now because it doesn't take long when that grease is real hot in that heavy skillet. Okay, so we're doing good. And I'm not deep frying these chops. I, I rarely deep fry anything, really. Okay. I'm only going to get three in there. Just three. Okay. We're good. Okay, so there we go. And we got it on medium high heat. Now see, I like that because then it'll give a chance to cook and I don't have to worry about is it going to burn, is it going to burn, all that kind of carry on. So I'm going to go ahead and meanwhile get the rest of these floured up and I'll be right back. Hey y'all, I'm back in the flour again today because I still got a taste of those biscuits. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try my hand at some of Mama's good old butter biscuits. I got two cups of flour and one cup of butter going so far. And you know what? Basically, this is it itself for the milk when I get ready to pour the milk. So this is going to be Mama's buttery buttermilk biscuits. Okay? And it's not going to take that long. It's probably take me, what, 15 minutes maybe? And then another 20 minutes to bake them. So 15, 20, 30. So 30, 35 minutes to make you a pan of biscuits. I mean, it's, it's no, I always say that. And people say, oh, you always say that. But I want y'all to just watch now. If anybody's interested in biscuits, if you have a pastry cutter, it's a lot easier. And there's just something about, because the times I have done my biscuit, melted my butter and poured it right in there or whatever. And I can remember now, Mama used to do this. This was lard when she did it. And most of the time, she would get her a big handful of lard, throw it in the middle of that uh, flour, mix it up, pour that milk on there. And you talk about some good biscuits. You know what? I think at the Piggly Wiggly, you can still get lard. I believe you can still get lard. But at the regular store, I don't like the food line and all that. I don't think you can get lard. Hang on, let me check my last pan of chocolate.
Okay, I got that last pan of chops. You know, I told you I had some of the large bone in chops, and then I had four, five, uh, five or six of the uh, smaller, well, yeah, five of the smaller just boneless pork chops. So they're just a big old chunk of meat, about a two inch thick uh, chunk of meat. And have all your good old fat on there. So, again, look at the consistency of your flour. So, I about got all the butter churned and mixed in there. So, this is like I said one pound of butter. And, well, you know, yesterday when I made the, um, so a pound of butter is like four, I think four sticks. Well, no, two sticks of butter. Two sticks of butter. I, I, I said a pound, a half a pound. I mean, a cup of butter. Okay. Half a pound when you because when you buy butter in those little blocks, that's where they measure it up like that. Okay, so now we're gonna pour the milk in. And I'm gonna show you consistency that you need. That I got my milk cup filled up too much. Let's see how. How good I am at this. I'm gonna pour this is just one cup, so that's that's buttermilk, okay? That's I'm pouring a half a cup in right now to see if it might not take the half a cup. I have made this I have made uh, see there? If I say so I'm gonna need a little bit more for this. There we go. And you know I have to get my hands in there at some point. Yeah. Just about gonna need about three, we're gonna say three fourths of a cup of buttermilk at this point. And y'all know this is gonna be good. Buttermilk and butter and flour, and that's all it is. Now, again, this is self-rising flour. Two cups of self-rising flour, one cup of butter, and about uh about three fourths of a cup of uh, buttermilk. I could put a little bit more, I could put the rest of that and a cup of buttermilk. So it does take a cup. So that little bit is not going to hurt nothing. Okay. Chuck, check my little chops again. I don't want them to fry too fast. I don't want to get them around up too much before I uh, get them done. So what I'm going to do with these right here. I'm going to try something. Now this is a, uh, Khadija, I told you I like your recipes and your tips. Okay. What I learned, just make sure I get it all mixed up real good first. What I learned from Khadijah when I was watching her yesterday is that um, she used oil on her hands and she didn't have to batter those biscuits. So sometimes the extra flour makes them tough. So that's what I'm going, I'm going for right now. I want to go for. Let's see. Let me find the oil. I'm going to oil my hands up real good. And we're going to see what's going to happen. And I'm going to try to pinch these off, roll them, and put them right on the baking sheet. Okay? Got my baking sheet already oiled up. I sprayed it with that uh, pan spray. Check my chops again. I think they're good for right now. Well, you know what? I got olive oil on here. It's real convenient. I'm going to see if I do what you did because you oiled your hands up to oil them up. Put that oil on that dough. Put some more oil. And I think it's going to work. Get that oil going on them. Might be a little bit too much, y'all know me, but I'm gonna make sure it works. See, it does. So if you don't want to bother with a lot of flour, because that's what I was thinking, you know, I'm gonna have to put a lot of flour, get these biscuits so I can roll them out. I think I look, need a little bit more, maybe, of uh, oil. Rinse my hand a little bit. Gotta check my chops too, y'all. I'm 
turn that dough out on uh, for some flour because what uh, Fatima was doing yesterday well, when she uh, got her dough going I thought I was going to be you have to leave that dough sitting for a while this is not going to be sitting I'm getting ready to make these biscuits honey so we're going to do them like mama used to do them let's get that dough rolled on up and at this point here right here at this point here I don't like to put a lot of flour. I don't like to roll a lot of flour. Now, this way, Mama did them. She can do all the rolling out and carrying on. She did like that. Got them hands floured up real good. And this this is called Mama's Old Fashioned Buttermilk, Buttery Buttermilk Biscuit. She break off a biscuit about that size, maybe a little bit bigger. She break them off about like that. And start putting them in the pan like so. And I... I want to get 12 to 14 out of there. You have to put the flour in them every once in a while to keep them from sticking to your hands. But this is the way I'm going to do them. Hopefully, I know I'll get 12 out of this batch. Just roll them, roll them, roll them. And like I said, all this is is two cups of flour, one cup of butter, a cup of milk. And that's it. You, you, you mix it. Yeah, I think I'll get some 12. You just roll them around like so. Yeah, space them out a little bit because I'm going to press down on them there toward the end. Put that on a little bit. And you know, biscuits to me are real easy to make. small okay if you get them a little bit small just do what you see me doing just pull off a little bit more and add it we're gonna get 12 out of this yeah I'm just doing this just to get the shake y'all couple of them, I might have made them a little bit too big, but that's okay. It, it, this will work. Let's see, this one right here is kind of big, so I'm going to rework that one. Rework that one. That will like a whole cake. I do want to get 12 out of here. That was a whole cake one. That was okay. So basically, that's it, y'all. So I got my pan of biscuits ready to go into the oven. I'm gonna show y'all the last thing that I have to do to them, and that is to this is what mom will do. She flatten them like so. Flatten them, flatten them, flatten y'all. Flatten them out, flatten them out, just like that. You know, she needs a little space in between because they, they got to have room to rise. And they'll probably be joined when I get them out, but that's okay. Because we didn't like the big old thick biscuits, and hopefully, not, maybe one or two of them, maybe, because I feel these up there kind of big. But anyway, and what, what would get me, she put a dimple in every last one of them for us. <laughs> she put us a little dimple in there. And those are mama's biscuits, y'all. These babies are ready to get into the oven. When they come out, I'm going to butter them again, and we'll be ready to eat them. So y'all hang in there, and I'll be back as soon as they get ready. Okay, y'all, everything is ready. The flavor train will be pulling in shortly. Um, this is some uh, country gravy. This, this is a package of gravy. 
All I did was just put a little milk and a little extra kitchen bouquet to brown it up a little bit. And we got gravy, y'all. That's that beautiful squash. That squash is so good. I'm telling you, it takes me all the way back home. And of course, back on that back burner are my lima beans and potatoes, y'all. Something new. Next to it, that good old steamed jasmine rice and those beautiful, beautiful golden brown bone-in and boneless fried mama's fried ella roberts fried pork chops and these are the way mama made her biscuits for us she made we like ours was a little flat with a little dimple in it see the little dimples and we like them about golden brown nice and flat um takes about 20 minutes to cook them two cups of flour i'm telling you it's just that simple two cups of flour one cup of butter one cup of buttermilk mix them up roll them out put them in a pan and bake them for 20 minutes and this is what you end up with so y'all this is what we're doing for dinner today hope y'all enjoy watching me cook it this is a good old country dinner and the last thing i'm going to do i'm going to take my butter brush as i call it and i'm going to brush these babies and i think i got some kind of jelly probably in the refrigerator if anybody wants jelly i was going to do some uh a little apple compote but i got some of that apple spread from yesterday um i was gonna cook something but i thought you know what i'm done in this kitchen I'm, this oven is off the kitchen is hot y'all it's cooling down so i dare not turn on anything else to do today so this is it and a little more butter on that brush just just make sure this is a smart start so these biscuits will be well buttered I mean, if you're going to eat biscuits, they got to have lots of butter. So, anyway, y'all, hope you all are having a God bless Sunday and that you got something uh, good on the table, ready to go, or you're in the process. I finished up early today. I'm telling you, they're supposed to be rolling in here right about now, right at 5 o'clock. So, I thought they were coming at 4, but I just slowed the process because I want these biscuits to be good and hot when they get ready to sit down and eat. So, guys love you guys thank you y'all again for tuning in for praying for and with me for standing in the gap and for praying without ceasing y'all continue to do just that so that we can make sure that all of our sisters and brothers are covered always in prayer that's why we pray without ceasing y'all love you guys thank y'all so much and just through this pandemic through this crisis through this social unrest pray 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 and pray some more like the scripture says when you've done all you can do to stand, stand. That means when you've stood as much as you thought you could stand, just take a deep breath and God will allow you to stand some more. So listen, y'all, I'm getting ready to shut it down, sit back, relax, and enjoy this meal. I'm going to breathe a few minutes before the kids get in here. And until the next time I cook, I tell y'all what, when y'all see this food again, it's going to be on the flavor train because Tony will be in here this afternoon. So love you guys so, so much. I'll continue to pray without ceasing, uh, reconciling those differences, keeping those prayers going up, please, sir, please, ma'am, so the blessings will continue to come down, especially prayers for our teachers, our children, and for all of our, our first responders and our frontline people. So love you, love you, love you. Thank you so much again. Until I cook again, guys, toodaloo.